Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 in the Jan 2022 PAW Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below, so be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. So let's take a read of the information for question 1. So part A asks us to state one reason why a retail store owner should prepare a control account for accounts payable. So what I put here was that I gave two reasons, right? So the first one is that it helps to summarize the entire ledger so we can see the total amount owed to creditors at a glance instead of having to add up all of the balances in the ledger. And another reason is that it also helps to double check the accuracy of double entry in the ledger or put another way, it helps to spot errors. Continuing on, the following information was extracted from the books of a retail store owned by Sati or CT at 31st March 2021. So we have some opening balances at 1st March. We have accounts receivable, so we have a debit balance as well as a credit balance here. We have accounts payable, which has just a credit balance. Now it makes sense because accounts payable, also known as trade creditors, that's a liability and liabilities have credit balances at start. Similarly, accounts receivable or debtors is an asset and assets have debit balances at start. We also have some closing balances at the end of March for accounts receivable. So we're seeing 8168 debit, 1253 credits. But what are they asking us here in part B? State one reason why the accounts receivable account would have a credit balance. Okay, so I gave a few reasons and you can see that they might be slightly repetitive or different ways of phrasing the same thing. So because of an overpayment to a customer, so if a customer overpays you, you of course owe them money, right? Now credit balances are actually relatively irregular balances, I guess you could say for an asset. Again, assets are supposed to have debit balances. A credit balance implies a liability that we owe them money. And it's quite possible for us to owe our debtors money. Again, because of maybe an overpayment, the customer paid too much. If we owe them a refund for whatever reason, or if because of an error in made in calculation or a double entry that needs to be fixed. So going on, it says additional information taken from Sati's books at 31st March 2021 is as follows. So we have a bunch of things to read through here, but long story short, they want us to do two control accounts, one for accounts payable, one for accounts receivable. Let's just read the rest of the question to make sure. Use the information provided above to prepare the following ledger accounts. Balance the accounts appropriately at the end of the month. So as I said, the first thing they want us to do is to prepare Sati's accounts payable control account for March 2021 using the form provided below, which we could see here, a uh, relatively standard T account. And if we scroll down, we'll see the accounts receivable control account. And as I mentioned, it says prepare Sati's accounts receivable control account for March 2021 using the form provided below. And again, standard T account with more space because there's probably going to be more information to put into the accounts receivable control account. Okay, so let's start populating the accounts payable control account. All right, so the first piece of information we're going to put in is the opening balance of 8800 and of course that's going to go on the credit side of the account why because accounts payable is a liability and liabilities have opening credit balances let's scroll down to the rest of the transactions now all right so we're looking for items relating to creditors so debtors debtors okay this one says total checks paid to suppliers so when you pay back your suppliers you pay back your creditors you are reducing the amount of money you owe them hence reducing the liability which will therefore require a debit to the liability account, as you can see here. Next, credit sales for the month. Discount received from suppliers, definitely that will go. So when suppliers give us discounts, they reduce the amount we have to pay them, thereby reducing the liability, which as we just said, will require a debit to the control account, like that. Now we have purchases. Now they didn't specify credit purchases, but there's no way in the question to separate this purchases figure into cash and credit. So we have to safely assume it's only credit purchases. Now that of course will increase the balance in the account, thereby requiring a credit entry, right? Now why will it increase the balance? Because when we buy on credit or when we make credit purchases, we take goods and promise to pay for them later. Therefore, we owe money for the goods, which is a liability. And of course, liabilities increase with credits. Next, I'm seeing returns outwards. So that's when we send goods back to the suppliers. And of course, if we send goods back, we no longer have to pay for them. Therefore, the liability will be reduced. Now, the rest of the items inside of here, those are all for the debtors or accounts receivable control account. So this is where I would say, let's balance off the T account. 
Let's just check back up the, the initial tables of the balances just for one quick second. Okay, so I'm seeing here in closing balances, we only have accounts receivable, the debit balance and the credit balance. But does that mean there's no closing balance for the accounts payable control account? Well, how do we know? So if we go into the control account, we're going to add up the items on the debit side, add up the items on the credit side, and then we're going to subtract to see what the difference or balance is. Interestingly enough, if we do that, we actually get the same figure. 76,800 on both sides. So what that means is that there's no closing balance in the creditor's control account, which means we have no money. We owe no money to our creditors or for accounts payable. Okay, let's take a look at the account receivable control account now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the two opening balances, 8,500 on the debit side and $65 on the credit side. Now let's scroll down and check out the other information. All right, so we have total cash received from debtors, $250. That's going to go on the credit side. And it goes on the credit side because when our debtors pay us back, they reduce the amount of money they owe to us. Remember, debtors is classified as an asset. If they pay us back, they reduce the amount they have for us, thereby decreasing the asset. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. The same logic applies for total checks received from debtors. When they pay us back, they reduce the total amount outstanding. Therefore, that will be recorded on the credit side of the control account. Checks paid to suppliers, no credit sales, right. So it was interesting to put credit sales, but not credit purchases. So, but anyhow, no 9975, 9,975. So when we make more credit sales to our credit customers, that's going to increase the amount of money they owe to us. Why? Because we're selling them goods on credit, which means we are giving them the goods we aren't receiving money from them right away. They're promising to pay us in the future. Therefore, they owe us money. And they're not going to owe us more money than they owed us at start, which is an increase in the asset. And assets increase with debits. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Okay, discounts received from suppliers, no purchases, no returns outwards. We double those three items up in the accounts payable control account. Okay, bad debt written off. So when our debtor can no longer pay us, it means that we have to write off the debtor's bad. So we're basically losing that money, which is of course a decrease in the debtor's balance and decreases in assets are recorded on the credit side. A dishonored check. Now that's when a debtor pays us. So that would initially be recorded on the credit side. But a dishonored check means the check has bounced. In other words, there was not enough money in the person's account to actually honor the check, or maybe they didn't sign the check, or maybe the figures didn't match the words or some. There was some problem with the check and it was sent back. So we didn't actually get the money. So we kind of have to undo the receipt. The receipt of the money was recorded as a credit in the account receivable control account. And to undo a credit, you have to debit the account. So dishonored checks will go on the debit side. The returns inwards, so that will go on the credit side because when customers return goods to us, they no longer have to pay for them. Therefore, the amount of money they owe us will go down, thereby reducing the debt or reducing the asset. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to go on the credit side of the account. Discount allowed? Well, that's where we allow our debtors to pay less. We reduce the debt for them or to encourage them to pay a little faster. So of course, if we reduce a debt or decrease the asset, that's going to be recorded on the credit side, as we can see here. Okay, so I think we had some closing balances a little higher up. Let's check those out. Right, so we had two closing balances, one on the debit side, one on the credit side. So of course, for a balance to be brought down on the debit side, as you can see here, it initially has to be carried down from the credit side like that. And similarly for the 1253, to be brought down on the credit side, you initially have to be carried down from the debit side. And what's gonna happen is if you total up both sides, you're gonna get the same 19,783. So you had no calculations per se to do here in terms of calculating closing balances. You simply had to add up both sides to make sure they were equal. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the Jan 2022 POA paper two. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to check out my website where I have some free payway handouts you might find useful. All right, guys. So as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.